In my last video, I mentioned that when it came to searching for potential topics to cover in a video in terms of dinosaur related video games, most of what I find are things that have either been talked about to death or things that are just not interesting enough to talk about in a video. I don't know why I limited that to just video game topics on my channel, because in all actuality, it's like that for any type of topic I search for. Whether it's paleontology, dinosaur movies, documentaries, or books, a lot of the time the things that come up are things that are either incredibly boring or things that have already had videos made on them. And if the topic is boring, then there goes the entertainment aspect of the video. And if it's already been talked about to the point where I would contribute nothing to said topic, then what would be the point in covering it? But there is a whole category of video topics that I would absolutely love to make videos on, ones that are actually interesting and ones that aren't widely talked about. But the only problem with these kinds of topics is the fact that there is simply not enough information there to make a full-on video on it. Typically, I like to find topics that I can dig deep into, and if there's nothing much to talk about with these topics that are still interesting, then I don't really see a point in making a video on them either. But that was before I decided to make this series that is fully dedicated to those smaller topics. Rather than trying to stretch what little information these smaller dinosaur related subject matters hold just to attempt to make a video for each and every one of them, it would be much easier just to compile and talk about a few of them at a time in one perfect video. And these videos will be a part of my first official series here on my channel that will be called Random Finds in Paleo Media. Now before we get into this, I do want to let you guys know that yes, this type of video structure and style has obviously already been done before. The specific YouTuber that I'm ripping this off of, the specific YouTuber that inspired me to make this series is Nexpo. Nexpo is one of the few people that actually inspired me to change things up in terms of content on my channel. He usually revolves his content around dark and horror related subject matters that he finds around the internet, and his videos are top tier. They're well edited, his commentary is great, the topics he chooses to cover are really engaging, despite them being revolved around some pretty fucked up shit. Overall, some pretty great stuff. One series that he's pretty well known for is his Disturbing Things from Around the Internet series, where he takes bite-sized disturbing topics that he finds around the internet and compiles them and talks about them in one video. If you like the sound of disturbing shit and well-edited videos and aren't a little bitch, then I highly recommend Nexpo's videos. Got it? Good. Now let's get into today's selected topics. If the name Julian Johnson Mortimer doesn't sound familiar to you, then maybe his dinosaur animations will. You've probably seen some of these animations floating around social media, with his most notable ones being based around the Spinosaurus in its most up-to-date, accurate look. But this is just a few of his several animations based around other prehistoric animals. YouTube seemed to have been an outlet for him to release these highly detailed animations that he seems to make on his own time. With how well these animations are, it's no surprise that his skill set has landed him in positions to help work on higher budget projects. And at one point, he seemed to have his own project project in the works that sadly never came to fruition. And there are a couple of instances of this project here on his channel. At first glance, these particular videos may not seem all that different from the other content he's posted on his channel, but the backstory is quite interesting. If you go to his channel and take a look at some of his oldest projects that were made almost a full decade ago, he actually released what I'm assuming was very early footage of what was supposed to be a very rough draft of what this project was eventually going to be had it not been scrapped. The first video features a species of cave lion in a snowy tundra before zooming out into a close-up shot of an adult mammoth and her young. The second video simply shows a trio of mammoths running towards the camera during a bright but snowy day. The video actually repeats a second time with the same animation, but this time set during an evening backdrop. Yes, the videos are short, but they seem to only be made for the purpose of being tests for whatever project he had in mind that never made it beyond this stage. He states this in the description of both of his videos, and while it could be easily guessed that this was going to be a documentary of some sort, I had to be sure. So I commented on his video 
video asking him what this project was going to be on in the hopes of getting a more specific answer. And he replied to my comment stating this project was going to be an IMAX documentary about the Ice Age. Why this never went forward, I don't really know, but the fact that it was going to be an IMAX project seemed like it was going to be a pretty big deal. It's a shame that this project never went forward, but with Julian's skills in animation, especially around prehistoric life, it wouldn't be a surprise if he went on board to help out with a future documentary based around that very subject. In 1887, the holotype of what would soon be known as the Akenosaurus would be discovered in the Aken Formation in Morsnet, a region located between Belgium and Germany. This discovery would eventually be named by Belgian scientist Gerard Smets, who, after examining the fragments of fossils that were discovered, came to the conclusion that it was the jaw fragments belonging to a species of hadrosaur. Then, another Belgian paleontologist examined these same hadrosaur remains, who was known as Louis Antoine Marie Joseph Dolo. Louis Dolo was a pretty big contributor in the early days of paleontology and paleobiology, helping out with excavations of iguanodon fossils reconstructing said fossils later on, studying dinosaurs and their ecology, and even forming a unique evolutionary hypothesis named after him called Dolo's Law, which focused on the irreversible nature of evolution. Another thing he did was correcting Gerard Smets's mistake on his hadrosaur fossil remains. Upon examining it, Luis Dolo came to the conclusion that it was not the jaw fragments of a hadrosaur, but instead the petrified wood of a prehistoric plant from the late Cretaceous period. As a result of this observation made by Luis Dolo, Smets grew so embarrassed that rumors had eventually spread about him apparently resigning his position in science out of shame. But this was later disproved after he wrote more papers around other subject matters in the field of science. But sadly, the damage had been done. On several accounts, Smets had attempted to defend his claims and observations surrounding these remains that he once thought were the jaw fragments of a hadrosaur in an attempt to save his reputation, to no avail. His defense over these observations would only get shot down and disproven, only worsening his situation. And unfortunately, despite his other contributions to science, it seems that this one mistake would be what Smets is best known for in his time working in this field. And as conflicting as this situation is, it is important that these kinds of corrections and observations are made, as they could help further our understanding of the prehistoric world. In fact, this wasn't the only time a correction like this was made. Fast forward to 1941. A German paleontologist by the name of Friedrich von Hune, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, stumbled upon an incredible find fossil remains that he thought belonged to a titanosauridae sauropod that was eventually named Suchinodon. Coincidentally, it was concluded that these specific fragments were also that of a jawbone, but in actuality, it was far from it. But unlike the Smets situation where it was figured out that the fossilized bone was actually a piece of petrified wood within a year, it would take 40 years for someone to catch this mistake with Suchinodon. In 1981, a couple of Polish paleontologists took another look at this sauropod jawbone and concluded that it was actually just another piece of petrified wood. But because Hune passed in 1969, he was unable to see his error. But what's ironic to me about this whole thing is how familiar Hune was with sauropods and prosauropods, and then he makes this kind of mistake. But paleontology is imperfect, and mistakes are made all the time. If anything, these mistakes just serve as stepping stones to further our understanding of fossilized remains of both animals and plants of the prehistoric world. Our final entry comes from a site known as Unseen64, which specializes in archiving information on cancelled or scrapped video games. One specific game that caught my attention was one called Pterosaur Dawn of Destruction, a 3D platform game that was developed by Atomic Planet and was originally going to be released for the PS2, original Xbox, and GameCube in 2002. According to the site, you play as a pterosaur that apparently saves dinosaurs from becoming extinct and leave others to die all as the world is coming to an end. It seems like a weird synopsis of the game, and unfortunately it seems to be the only real one I could find as there really isn't much about this game around the internet. Besides this article on it on this site, they also link a 40 second teaser of the game uploaded to the site's channel, which shows the in-game pterosaur completing missions, saving dinosaurs, and avoiding carnivores. 
Just from looking at the trailer, it seems that this game was going for a more cartoony and goofy style for the dinosaurs. This is further evident with the pterosaurs funny running animations and whatever strange lizard thing he's carrying towards the end of the teaser. There's not much to work with here to try and understand what exactly they were going for in terms of story, given there was going to be one at all. But the article continues explaining the dinosaurs within the game by stating, You had to learn to recognize the most vulnerable dinosaurs and how they behave to be able to save them. While bigger dino predators were searching for the weaker dinos to eat, they could have been lured away or defeated in an open battle. The scenario could have been explored to find hidden paths with the help of friendly dinosaurs that cleared the way. Personally, games with these kinds of style and design for their dinosaurs aren't my cup of tea, but given from the comments from both the article and the teaser video, many are rather disappointed that this game wasn't ever released, as it seems to hold a lot of potential and could have been something great had it been given the chance. And this leads me to the next thing about this game. The site also mentions that the reasoning for this game's cancellation is unknown. There is speculation that maybe it simply wasn't fun enough and because of that, it made it harder to find publishers interested in a game enough to pick it up. Eventually, Atomic Planet would become defunct in 2009, leaving Pterosaur's Dawn of Destruction completely behind. With only this 40 second teaser and a small gallery of screenshots and promotional pictures to confirm this game's existence. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for being so patient despite the fact that this video was pretty short. It actually took me much longer than I expected to get out. I know that my schedule is usually inconsistent but this video took a little longer than I expected in terms of just editing but I think that's just because so many different things that happened in these last couple of weeks. I have finals coming up for my college courses because the semester is almost over so I've been really trying to hammer out my work with that. And uh, I ended up getting my first vaccine shot over this last weekend, and that was that was fun uh, dealing with all of the side effects. And I'm still not like feeling 100% from those side effects as of recording this, but I'm pretty sure by the time I get it uploaded and all edited and done, uh, I'll feel a lot better and will be feeling good enough to move on on my next project, which is the next thing I wanted to talk about. I do have another video coming out soon. Uh, I say soon, but let's be honest, soon can mean in a couple days or in a few weeks or literally next year. I don't even know at this point. Regardless, a video is coming out that will feature my friend Pish. I did mention in one of my community posts that I would tell you guys a little bit more about this video. I don't usually like spoiling my projects that I work on, but just to kind of tide you guys over and to kind of throw you guys a bone since I have been gone for a, li a little while now, a few weeks, I feel like it's only fair that, uh, you know, I at least give you guys a little something to look forward to on the channel. And uh, without saying a whole lot, I do want to say that this next video that I'm going to be working on is going to be in another iceberg video. It's been a long time coming since my last iceberg video, which was on Jurassic Park. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. I thought it was a pretty good video and uh, I wanted to come back to iceberg videos because I never really lost interest in that trend. To this day, I still look at iceberg videos randomly of topics I'm not even familiar with. I just think they're interesting as a whole. Now, I'm not going to say what topic this iceberg is going to be on. If you guys want to guess down in the comments below, nothing will happen. But that's pretty much all of the updates I have for now. Thank you guys so much for waiting for this video for the last few weeks. And thank you guys so much for watching. That's all for now. Thanks again. And please have a nice day.